Hello everybody, this is Tekka. In this video, what I'm going to be doing is asking the question I by far get the most often on the comments of these videos, and that is, what is the best Linux distribution for dot dot dot? Whether that be web development, general programming, gaming, just general categories like that. Now the short answer to this is there are none. Everything when it comes to picking the best of anything really is highly subjective and it's all up to user preference and to actually develop a user preference you're going to have to try things out and determine what you like. And then ultimately it comes down to the distribution really isn't the most important thing. It's how you're interacting with your computer. And then that falls down to the desktop environment or whatever window manager that you choose to use. If you're somebody who is coming over from Windows and you're just used to that ecosystem and used to that workflow, there are desktop environments and distribution specific things that are designed to make the transition a lot easier and smoother. If you're into web development, it really has nothing to do with the actual uh, distribution. Of course, the desktop environment and how everything looks and is organized is important, but the applications that you're using for those specific tasks are what is actually going to be most important. So like, for example, if you asked me, what is the best Linux distribution for uh, media production, content production, things like that? I would say whatever you can work most efficiently in and install something like Kdenlive, GIMP, DaVinci Resolve, uh, Audacity, and whatever production applications you use, it's really not dependent on the actual Linux distribution, what they're actually good for. It's what works best with you. And then getting into that, if you're somebody who is like really into keyboard and you like window managers, well, you're going to have to get into window managers. But then again, you're going to have to learn the different either programming languages or the in-depth configuration files to really configure those how you want to meet your workflow. Or if you're mouse centric and you just want a clean experience, you go with your KDE Plasma or GNOME distributions or distributions with those things pre-installed. So really, what is the best distribution for blah, blah, blah is not really a question that can be answered in a simple sentence. Uh, to figure that out, you'd really have to play around with different distributions and different desktop environments to figure out what works best for you. And earlier I said distribution really doesn't matter, and that's kind of true. The only things the distribution, the distributions do three main things. They are the update structure, so if you want the added privilege of having updated software, feature sets, and things like that. You can go with something like an Arch-based distribution, you go with Solus, something that's more on a rolling release model. Now, on the other hand, if you're looking for something that's not gonna really change on you that often, that's where you could go for your uh, Ubuntu LTS releases, your Debian's, or even if you're looking for something like a middle of the road, you could go with something like Fedora. The second thing distributions have a huge influence on is your package management system. And with this, there aren't really too many big changes. They all generally function the same. It's just sudo package manager name or alias install whatever. There's some things here and there, but they all generally do the same thing. Package management in general is not a big enough reason to pick the distribution unless if you're going with something like an arch system because you want access to the aur the arch user repositories which gives you a huge list of software that you could go ahead and grab and that in itself kind of has its own risks because it's the arch user repositories not the arch official repositories and even with the growing acceptance of things like snap packages flat packages and apt images you can really get anything on any Linux distribution anyways that are updated directly from the developer side, which is very nice. And then the third and probably the most notable contributing factor to this is the actual customizations and contribu contributions, contributions that these distributions have made. Unless if you're looking at something like a uh, Solus or an elementary OS that completely have made their own desktop environment. A lot of these distros put little tweaks and spins on existing desktop environments to better suit a specific niche. And it's at this point of the video, I'm going to contradict <laughs> a lot of what I just said and give you some uh, examples of distributions that are made specifically for a specific use case. Now here I am on Ubuntu. This isn't my main distribution. I have this installed because I'm running benchmarks. 
But this is a good example, and this is one of the kind of uh, gateways to Linux that a lot of people end up taking. This is where a lot of people dive into the rabbit hole that is Linux. It's a good distribution. It's fairly organized. Uh, if you're used to using it, you're going to be fine. If you like GNOME, you're going to be fine. This is actually GNOME 40 now. So, I mean, it works pretty good. A lot of people gave this version of Ubuntu bad reviews, but I haven't had as much of the bad experiences other people seem to have. Everything works good. The imp implementation of GNOME 40 seems to be good, but we're not talking about Ubuntu right now. A, an example, a classic example of a use case specific Linux distribution is Garuda Linux. If we go over to download, scroll down, we're gonna have the Garuda Dragonized Edition. And this is heavily associated with gaming. And there's a lot of reasons for this. This distribution has a lot of customizations, a lot of added tools that make it really easy. Specifically, this Garuda Gaming Edition right here, it's in the title. They use things like the Linux Zen kernel, which apparently has some gaming optimizations. They have other suites and utilities that make it really easy to jump into games right away, such as really easy to use apps to go ahead and pull Steam, Lutris, whatever you're gonna need. This is an example of a use case specific built Linux distribution. Now, even if you're not a gamer, it's a beautiful distro. It's optimized very well. And if you just like this, this is a KDE Plasma desktop. If you just like their configuration, it saves you some time and work if you ever need to reinstall it, or if you just want this configuration, it's easy. Additionally, they have like the uh, Black Arch edition here. That's just another example of something that's more use case specific. That comes with a lot of hacking tools and things like that. So that's something that's really fun to play around with. And then here we have Zorin OS. This is one that um, a lot of people could title the best Linux distro for new Linux users. Uh, and like I said, all this is highly subjective. This is just kind of my personal opinion, but you could go down. It's very it's a GNOME desktop environment, but this is heavily customized to the point where there's task bars and a bunch of things that you wouldn't expect in your typical GNOME desktop, just to make the overall user friendliness and all that there for people who are new. And in addition, this distribution has some extra tools that, for example, if you were trying Linux for the first time and maybe you downloaded an EXE because you weren't too familiar with how uh, package management worked in Linux, it would redirect you to a Linux alternative, it would redirect you to the software center, or it would help you try to install it with Wine. And that's just one example of a very nice contribution from a Linux project. And just to kind of show an example of things you might Google if you look up something like this, I just did a Google search for the best Linux distro for programming, and we get articles like this. Now I am slightly at fault here because I've written things like this, like the best for new users, things like that. But this, like something like programming is so generic that any good, well-rounded Linux distro is a good distribution for programming. Scroll down here, I could just see a quick list of some of the things that they're using or um, suggesting. And these are just a list of some of the top uh, used and top respected Linux distributions. None of these really have anything to do with programming. Granted, every single one on here that I see, I've tried and they're all fantastic, but ultimately the distro here doesn't really matter. It's how it works and how you want things to be up to date for you. So for example, here they have Ubuntu, which is what I'm currently running. It's great. OpenSUSE is great. Uh, Fedora is great. They're, they're all good. Now, Pop! OS is on here, and this is another one that's generally good for programming. They have their own contributions. Um, they give you really good hybrid graphics support if you're on a laptop like that, or NVIDIA support in general. And they have really easy to use customization options within GNOME to get docs and things like that. Arch Linux is fantastic if you could get it installed. And it's kind of weird to list like this going from Pop! OS to Arch to Solus. It's like kind of a weird chain of events there. But with something like programming, it really just depends on the software that you want to use. And you could have any Linux application on any distribution, ultimately. So I'm sorry if this video was a non-answer to the question, but I do hope it helped. I am going to make a video pretty soon going over a lot of the popular uh, desktop environments. Because ultimately, in my opinion, that's what really matters when it comes to how you're interacting with your computer. 
It's going to be a video where I spend one to two minutes per desktop environment, maybe 10 or so of them, just so you could kind of see the general differences between them, and you could kind of know the ones you want to go ahead and try out. With anything, I do recommend you try out some of these distributions or these desktop environments in something like VirtualBox, play around with it, see if it's gonna work with your workflow. And if you are like currently on Windows and you're looking into Linux, I recommend you check out my video where I talk about the top uh, free and open source applications that are available on Windows that are also available on Linux, because that's gonna give you a good jump into it. If you're on Windows and you could go ahead and start changing your current workflow to all applications that are natively available on Linux, the actual transition for you is going to be way easier. With all this said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. I'd like to thank our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. We have Mitchell Valentino, Sledge, Hammer, Timo, Anthony, Kyle, Chris, Curtis. I do thank you all so much for supporting the channel and to all the other Techie and Techie Plus members. If you would like to help support the channel, you can go over to Patreon, subscribe over there, or hit the join button down below if you want YouTube things like emojis and badges and things like that. Otherwise, if a simple like, subscribe, ring that bell, may, bell, bell, maybe share this with your friends. Anything is awesome. Uh, with all that said, I do hope you have an absolutely wonderful day and goodbye.